Celebs sing John Lennon's satanic anthem, Imagine, amidst coronavirus pandemic. And college students continue to eat and drink for tomorrow they die. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Now, there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin and there are those who are dead to sin. After three nights of unbridled lawlessness across London, the contagion is spreading. The problem is that God has already judged this. He has judged murder already. I don't need to question it. I don't need to ask and wonder what his plan is. We're commanded as Christians not to participate in the works of darkness, but expose them. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we continue to talk about what is going on all over the world. I mean, this is why we do this show, is to talk about the things that are going on in this world and bring them in light of Scripture. Take every single thought that we have and take it captive to the obedience of Christ. And one of the things uh, we've been dealing with as a ministry, we've had a lot of stuff pushed back, which, you know, compared to what a lot of people are dealing with, it means very, very little. But we wanted to be out there in Texas. We actually were supposed to leave on Monday or Tuesday of uh, Monday of next week. And it, it it's really sad. I, I, w- I was really excited. There's a couple of families out there that I've gotten to know a little bit through uh, the internet. And I was really excited to meet as well as a ton of you guys. But we are just postponing that. That's one of the cool things is that we are, Lord willing, it's just a postponement that we will get back out there. And I believe that the Lord will bring out his glory in all of this. And like he always does. And one of the things that will happen is that gives us more time to prepare. And Lord willing, keep us in prayer. We are working on videos. Hopefully, who knows how long it's going to last. We could have a video ready since we're all stuck on our computers. We could have a video ready for you guys uh, by the time we get out there. I don't know. Uh, Maybe uh, hopefully send emails and put more pressure on Joe. But uh, (laughs) nonetheless, uh, we're really, really excited, guys, to talk about this because it's it's tough to go through and and we want to hopefully continue to bring you guys content. I literally was sitting in my house today putting together this teaching as well as others and I'm like, "Man, I just want to get content out for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are in your homes. We have a ton of people that are not in upstate New York. They are in Long Island area." <laughs> uh, and hopefully I finally got that fixed and figured out. Uh yeah. <laughs> I've been messing that one up for quite a few months and been refused to take correction on that. So, yes, we do not have a group in in, in upstate New York, uh, but we have two groups a little lower than that and to the east. <laughs> but we are really, really excited and we, we feel uh, terrible for a lot of you guys that are maybe shut in and, and without fellowship. I know what we did at my house, we took a picture of it and I'll probably post that a, as well. Uh, we took a... We, are getting together inside my home. We're cooking with people that we know are healthy and everything, everyone's fine. And we're just spending some time together in fellowship and still digging in the word together. We're going to be taking communion there together, get worshiping together, getting in the word together. So I'm praying for you guys. And if you guys who have families, you know, praise God, you get to spend some more time with them, hopefully. And for you guys that are out there working on the streets, whether you're nurses or whether you're, you know, putting together, putting groceries up and, and we have a ton of people that are doing that and working for Amazon. Um, and guys, I know you guys are working your, your tails off and praise God for you guys. Cause I know when I am going out and my wife is going out and my mom works at Costco. So she's the receiving secretary secretary here in Simi Valley. And I just feel absolutely terrible for her considering, you know, the madness that's uh, befallen that place. But there are a lot of different things that could be worse. We could be Italy, for example. And I was looking at a few things online and I was watching videos of Italy two weeks before the outbreak took place and everyone was just hanging out doing their thing. Like nothing was happening. And then next thing you know, now they're all shut in. They're they're dying. Uh, I believe they have, if not, and, and this is more off the top of my head. Uh, I didn't put this down in my notes, but I believe Italy has one of the oldest populations uh, in the world. So when it comes to this virus and its spread, how dangerous is that for them? You know, so we want to make sure that we are keeping them in prayer. Uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ that are on the front lines of this and those who are passing away, I pray that this 
entire event that is taking place is hopefully bringing to a play, bringing you to a place where your eyes are looking up. That it's not the time to look at this world and think that you have any hope in this world, but that completely and everything about you from your toes to the top of your head, you are looking up at Jesus, recognizing our fixed hope and our place for comfort is only in him. And um, it's so interesting because as I say that, there's been a video gone viral on the internet. And I'm going to play a short clip, but I can only handle so much. Um, The singing's terrible, and I hate the lyrics and the song even more. But there has been this anthem going about all over the internet with a ton of celebrities. Of course, Wonder Woman, I guess, is the one who kind of started this thing. She's the one you're going to hear from, Gal Gadot. Uh, She played Wonder Woman in the recent uh, Pagan Princess movies. And uh, you'll see Mark Ruffalo's in there, Kristen and wig, I think is how you say it. She's a comedian. Just a number of celebrities, and I don't know how many you'll hear of them because I'll have to cut it off because I can't handle it. But uh, I'm going to play a little clip so you guys can hear it. And notice what she says in the beginning, okay, concerning why this song and why she heard this in Italy being sung or played on a trumpet and why this song spoke to her, supposedly. Tony, let's play that clip. Hey, guys. Day six in uh, self-quarantine and I gotta say that um, these past few days uh, got me feeling a bit philosophical Um, you know this virus had affected the entire world everyone doesn't matter who you are where you're from we're all in this together And I saw, I ran into this video of this Italian guy playing the trumpet um, in his balcony uh, to all the other people who were locked inside their homes. And he was playing Imagine and there was something so powerful and pure um, about this video. Uh, And it, it goes like this. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. All right, that's 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 about enough of that. I, I'm gonna go through the lyrics with you guys, but. This song has been one that I have seen as, and and I call that in the title, so if you're clicking on this video, you probably heard it in the title, a satanic anthem, and and I'm going to get to why I believe it is specifically a satanic anthem, and if you just heard the first couple lyrics, I think uh, you probably get that idea, but I remember, guys, when I was first studying who Carl Lentz from Hillsong, New York was. Interesting enough, that's where a lot of this, um, that's part one of the, I think New York is probably being hit the hardest in our country, uh, specifically, if I remember correctly. Um, but Hill Hillsong, New York, Carl Lentz, I remember when I was first researching him, one of the reasons I was doing that is because I had a picture pop up with him and the shirt that he had on, which I believe he had cut and made sleeveless, uh, and it said, imagine all the people. And I remember I started writing an article, and next thing you know, I was 10 to 12 pages deep on research, and we never even posted it. <laughs> but but I remember looking into it and just asking the question, how could someone who claims to be a pastor wear a shirt glorifying a song that calls Jesus a liar? And that was basically the premise of, of what started to be an article and then just turned into, wow, I didn't know he was off on so many areas. And I just thought, wow, could you imagine wearing that t-shirt as a quote-unquote pastor, as a shepherd, knowing what that, the first line in the song says, imagine if Jesus is a liar. Okay? Because if you imagine that there's no heaven 
And it's easy if you try to imagine that. Now, I don't think it's that easy, in all honesty, because the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that God has placed eternity in our hearts. Okay, so I don't believe it's that easy. And and I'm going to tell you this, when I share the gospel with people, I recognize there are people that have seared their conscience. I recognize there are people that have absolutely continued to burn away and sear the conscience that they have. But I always remember... And that's something I always think about when I'm sharing with a quote-unquote atheist, I was one of them, that I remember the stirring in my heart as a lost man. If there was anything I remember from those days, it was the idea of eternity and being so frightened of the capability of eternity. And I believe that God does leave that. I believe that's his provenient grace, him going before us and giving us that grace that reminds us that this isn't it. So it's not easy if you try. It's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. But we'll keep going because the very next verse, no hell below us, above us, only sky. I want to do, we're going to talk about John Lennon specifically and the Beatles as well here in this episode. But I wanted to point out these, these things because we're going to compare Jesus with John Lennon. Okay, because this is the quote unquote inspiration from these celebs. This was something she said was, quote, pure and powerful. There is nothing pure about claiming there is no heaven and no hell. There is nothing more impure than that. There is nothing that lacks more power than a lie such as this. Okay, to lie to people and say that there's no afterlife and that we should just be imagine all the people living for today. And you guys could retranslate that to imagine all the people doing what thou wilt. Okay? Because that's exactly what that means. Imagine all the people just living for today. Like eternity doesn't matter. Then he goes into imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard if you try. Nothing to kill or die for no and no religion Two, imagine all the people living life in peace. Well, I want you to imagine no religion. And you can take a look at Stalin in Stalin's Russia, Mao Zedong and Paul Pot, and you can go to and look at these countries as a picture of no religion. And then he goes into, you may say, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. There will be a day when the world is as one, there will be a day where that does happen, where there's only one currency, where people come to the temple of God as there is one sitting in the seat of the temple of God, acting as though he is God, and they will all worship him. And the reason why it will become so easy to them to do that is because, as it says in 2 Thessalonians 2, they refuse to believe the truth, and so they are given over to a lie. I do not want to refuse to believe the truth. I want to believe the truth and trust in my Savior, my fixed hope. I don't need to put my trust in men. In fact, there is judgment. Jeremiah 17 says, for you, woe unto you. That's judgment for you who places your trust in men. Men will always let you down, okay? There's a reason why we have jails. There's a reason why you lock your doors, okay? Imagine no possessions, I wonder if you can, no need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of men. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Now, I think if there was any point of hypocritical nonsense that you could find in the world, okay, it would be right here. Okay, this may be the absolute perfect definition of hypocrisy as Gal Gadot and Mark Ruffalo and Christy, Christine, Kristen Wiig and all these celebrities singing this song in their beautiful homes with their nice private security, all of them with all of these possessions telling you to just imagine there's no possessions, Okay. Imagine if you just have a mark on your hand or forehead and you can just come and get things freely from your king, okay, from your antichrist, all right? You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Do you want to know what John Lennon really wanted the world to be as one? He wanted it to be as one in the antichrist, okay? Not in Jesus, 
Not one in heart and one in mind as believers, okay? But John Lennon, and it started with the Beatles, John Lennon was a Crowleyite. He was a follower of the godfather of Satanism, a Lester Crowley, okay? Or not godfather, he was just the father of Satanism, okay? He was a follower of him, and in fact, he even had him, okay? The Beatles all together, okay, had a Lester Crowley and a picture in the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Cubs Band album cover. He is in the top left corner, if you look at it, the, the very unattractive little bald man at the very top, okay? And in an interview, just to make it clear, in an interview, John Lennon with Playboy said the entire beat of philosophy was, quote, do what thou wilt, the maxim of of a Lester Crowley, the maxim of the 1960s with the sexual revolution, the maxim of the father of Satanism, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, okay? That was his maxim, and they ran with it. And in fact, while we're talking about the Beatles, don't think that John Lennon was the only wicked one. George Harrison actually admitted that in his song, Hallelujah, his intent to get in the song was to get people from the West comfortable in singing hallelujah and then switch it to Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. And this is quote, hallelujah, kind of lull them into a sense of false security. And then suddenly it turns into Hari Krishna and they will all be singing that before they know what's happened. That is what George Harrison did in his song to bring you to a place where you're worshiping a demon. Okay, that's exactly what he did. And John Lennon himself, he was absolutely not only a follower of Lester Crowley, but absolutely him and Yoko Ono, they were Satanists. In the lives of John Lennon, Albert Goldman reported this, okay, about Yoko Ono and what Yoko Ono uh, said. She said, finally, it was time to consummate all these spells by making a living sacri- sacrifice and signing a pact with the devil. For Lena was not a white witch. She was the real thing, a practitioner of black magic. There was, there was no knowing what she had planned to do to seal the bond with Lucifer. All she would say was that the witch's moon was nigh and that they had to make ready for the sacrifice. We've got to make a sacrifice with the blood of an innocent to the one who has the power. Guys, John Lennon and Yoko Ono paid $60,000 to sacrifice a cat to Satan because his career wasn't doing so well, okay? This is the guy who wrote Imagine, or I believe was probably channeled through him, and this is what is going viral online, these hypocrites singing this song, and I will call it exactly what it is. It's an anthem for Satanism. It's an anthem for the lie that we need to live for today and we need to do what thou wilt. That is exactly the opposite of the message of Jesus Christ. It is precisely the antithesis of the message of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you guys this. I am not, all right, I'm not a big fan of C.S. Lewis, all right? He put witchcraft, good witchcraft, quote unquote, inside of his novels. Uh, I believe he went very, he was a little wishy-washy on the atonement. Uh, he also, um, he also at the end of his life, I believe, on his deathbed, if I remember correctly, actually asked if a Catholic priest would be there. So I am not a huge, huge fan of C.S. Lewis, but he made a very good philosophical point, which was originally on a BBC interview, okay, and then uh, turned into what the book we call Mere Christianity. And this is the idea of Jesus either being the Lord, liar, or a lunatic, okay? That he does not give us the option with who he is and the things he promised us for us to simply say he's a good teacher. And I want to read uh, what exactly what that means in terms of what C.S. Lewis said. He said, quote, I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying that really foolish thing that people often say about Jesus, him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. 
He would either be a lunatic on the level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left us that open to us. He did not intend to. Now it seems to me obvious that he was neither a lunatic nor a fiend. And consequently, however strange or terrifying or unlikely it may seem, I have to accept the view that he was and is God. And guys, I do believe that to be a statement of truth. Like I said, I'm not a big C.S. Lewis fan, but the idea of Lord, liar, lunatic, I believe is a biblical, okay, outlook. All right. Jesus does not give us that option. Okay. Jesus doesn't, does not give you the option to live for today. In fact, you bank all of everything he said. You bank everything on who he is and what he performed. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, we are given the basic understanding of the most basic tenets of the Christian faith. Okay. In those tenets, you have to believe that he died rose again, and that he is Yahweh, that he is the God of the Old Testament, that he is God. You have to believe those things. If you believe those things, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God, that he was raised from the dead, that God raised him from the dead, right? It says there, and then we also know from John 2 that Jesus says, I will raise it up, okay? In, the, in an act of triunity with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay? And then it says, all who call on the name of, quoting Joel 2.32 from the Old Testament, all who call on the name of Yahweh, the Lord, Lord, Jehovah, in the fake, false, unbiblical translation of the JWs, all who call the name of Jehovah shall be saved, in context with calling Jesus Jehovah. So yes, the very basic tenets of our faith are probably found there in Romans 10, 9 through 13. Okay, you have to believe those things. Jesus did not give us the option that we could live for today. I want to show you who gave you the option that you could live for the day. I want to show you the professors that I would I would bet you most of them in a lot of the colleges today are huge fans of John Lennon, okay? Most of them are huge fans of Imagine. Just like these propagators, these celebrities, it passes down generation to generation, and the Beatles are still so popular today, and they push this nonsense, and you think that you can go and listen to this and continue to regurgitate this lie from the pit of hell, and that it will have no effect on your children, it will have no effect on their worldview, I think you are willfully ignorant. And this... Guys, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, these are your college students. This is what they are learning in college. Tony, let's play the clip. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. About two months we've had this trip planned. Two, three months. So we're just not even having a good time. Whatever happens, happens. Like, it's really messing up with my spring break. What is there to do here other than go to the bars or the beach and they're closing all of it? It's really messing up. I think they're blowing it way out of proportion. I think it's doing way too much. Doing us bad. We need a refund. This virus ain't that serious. It's serious. It's more serious things out there like hunger and poverty. And we need to address yes, that. Yeah, I mean, we planned this a long time ago and it was kind of up in the air if we still go. But like we're here, I just turned 21 this year, so I'm here to party. So it's kind of disappointing, but we're just making the most of it. We met these other people in our little Airbnb spot. So we're just hanging out with them and trying to get drunk before everything closes. <laughs> I mean, it sucks, but we're going to make the best of it. We're enjoying ourselves. It sucks. And I'm from New Orleans, so this really sucks. However, we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're having day parties all day. It's my birthday, St. Patrick's Day. Turn up. We're just trying to roll with the boy. We're just living for the moment. We're just going for, we're just going to do what happens, when it happens. When stuff closes, we're going to do when it closes. But uh, uh, besides that, we're just trying to have the best trip we can. We're Imagine all the people just living for today. Or this is how Paul put it. If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And I want to give you the context of that. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we have the 
the statement of the resurrection, the I viewership, that all this, all of this is true. And a lot of us will point to that, okay? We point to 1 Corinthians 15, a received doctrine to Paul that he received, okay? Something way early in the gospel message. And then we look forward and, and see all those things. And he's saying, because he raised from the dead, we know there's an afterlife, guys. There is a heaven. There is judgment. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 is all about. And then he goes to what was currently happening to him. Remember that Paul, okay, was a Pharisee of Pharisees, a religious celebrity of his day, and stepped down from that to be beaten, shipwrecked, mocked, ridiculed, thrown, stoned, beaten, lashings, all of these things that took place in Paul's life. He left all of the living for today because he recognized the eternality And this is what he says, and you guys can read this for yourself. It is a proof, I believe, a proof text concerning the resurrection, pointing us to the fact that our bodies will one day also be raised from perishable to imperishable. But here's what it says, starting at verse 30. Why are we also in danger every hour? I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If from human motives I fought off with wild beasts at Ephesus, what does it profit me? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Become sober-minded as you ought and stop sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Jesus himself, in Matthew chapter 6, put everything, everything in this world is to go one place, and it's not in your heart. And I I encourage you, I thought I was going to get to read all through Matthew 6, not going to happen. Thought I was going to get to read through Luke chapter 12, not going to happen. I don't have enough time. But I want to say this to you guys. This In Matthew chapter 6, you start at verse 1, you go through the Lord's Prayer, and you go through Him basically telling you it's not about today. It's not about what you gain from other people seeing your piety. It's what you are doing for me and where your heart is. It says, truly I say to you, they have, they have their reward in full. Speaking of those who do their fasting and those who do their praying out in public and those who tell everyone how great, how great their, their walk with the Lord is, even though <laughs> they're liars. Um, but you, when you fast, anoint your oil, wash your face, that your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Quote, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves cannot break in steal or do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Jesus cared about the heart. And in a warning about covetousness, in Luke chapter 12, I'm just going to read from it as quickly as I can, but here's what it says. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? Then he said to me, beware and be on guard against every form of greed or not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself saying, what shall I do since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, your soul is required of you. And now who will own what you have prepared? So is the man who stores up treasure for himself and not rich toward God. The only thing that matters, guys, is what you have in the Lord, where you store up your treasures. Here's why I say Jesus was Lord, liar, and lunatic. Biblically, the fact is, look at Lazarus and the rich man. If you were living for today, you would want to be the rich man. His crumbs would fall off his table for Lazarus to eat as Lazarus was having his wounds licked by dogs. But Jesus said, no, he is, he is, was then in Abraham's bosom and will, is now in the presence of the Lord right now, waiting, waiting his bodily resurrection. That I'm telling you, if all of these promises are not true, okay, 
then Jesus lied to us. But the fact is, he's not a liar. John Lennon was, and now John Lennon knows how much of a liar he was. This satanic anthem that, that these celebrities are pushing on us, and now our youth has absorbed into their life. They have lived the do what thou wilt. They have done everything living for today. They don't care about their grandmother getting coronavirus. They don't care about COVID-19 killing a bunch of people. I'm going to go party for spring break, and I can't believe my party's ruined. And I'm telling you, do not be the person that Jesus said, your soul is required of you this day. You can get right with the Lord later. Get right with the Lord today. It may not be COVID-19. It may not be a toilet paper outage, but it could be today, your last hour. What I tell you right now is that we don't eat and drink for tomorrow we die. We know we won't taste the second death, just like Jesus promised to the church of Smyrna in Revelation chapter two, that we won't be touched by that second death. This has been Chad Davidson, and this is the 5-11 News.